In this video, we're going to look at the difference between a molecular, complete, and net ionic equation. So I've written out the definitions. Um, these are, you can find these in the textbook. You can also copy them into your notes uh, right from this video. So if you push the pause button now and copy them into your notes, that would be ideal. A molecular equation is where we have all compounds written with proper phase labels. So this is what you guys are used to. So as an example, we'll do two examples um, going from uh, net ionic, uh, going from uh, molecular to net ionic. We'll do one that involves a acid base and we'll do one that involves a precipitation. So the first one we'll do is the reaction of HCl aqueous with NaOH aqueous, which gives uh, NaCl aqueous plus H2O liquid. Now, at this stage in the lecture videos, you're, you don't know how to predict the products yet. But what's going to eventually happen is you are going to be able to predict these products. We're going to give you HCl and NaOH, and you're going to know how to predict those products. And then from there, the process that we're going to show you will allow you to go from the molecular, which you predict, all the way to the net, which you're going to have to figure out. So what I have here is the molecular. And as you can see, it's all the compounds with their appropriate phase labels. It's a balanced reaction. And so this is, this is what we're used to. That's the, the molecular is what we've been talking about all along. So a complete is where the strong electrolytes are written in dissociated form, and weak electrolytes are written, written in molecular or ionic form. So what we're getting at is anything that's dissolved in water and broken up into ions, we show it as that, that being the case. Anything that's dissolved in water but not broken up into ions, so these are going to be our weak electrolytes, are written in the molecular form. In the case of acids and bases, this would be the acid or the base. In the case of a insoluble salt, this would be the salt, not, not the ions uh, that it breaks up into. So let's look at this for an acid base. So for the complete, what we're going to do is anything that's written as aqueous gets broken up because we know that that's dissolved into solution. So anything that's a soluble... Um, strong electrolyte. So HCl we know is a strong electrolyte. We're going to go about memorizing these. So in the next couple of lecture videos, I'm going to explain to you what you have to memorize. So this is going to break up into H plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. And the same thing for NaOH. We're going to learn that that is a strong electrolyte. So that will get broken up. And so what we know that what we have we we know from this now what we have in solution is really not HCl aqueous but we have some H plus ions in solution we have some Cl minus ions in solution some Na plus and some OH minus and we'll do the same for NaCl NaCl plus is a strong electrolyte so we get Na plus aqueous and we get Cl minus aqueous now water is a weak electrolyte. Uh, if we go to our knowledge of acids and bases, uh, it is not a strong acid or a strong base, so therefore it is a weak electrolyte. If it's not strong, it's weak. So we bring down the H2O liquid and we don't ionize it because it's not a strong electrolyte. Okay, so now let's look at the net ionic form. So the net ionic form of this is going to be where we get rid of the spectator ions. So spectator ions, um, oops, I put the, hold on. Oops, a daisy. I put the parenthesis in the wrong spot. So spectator ions, uh, the definition for those are ions that appear in both the products and the reactants. These are removed in the net ionic. So we have to go through and find in the complete which ions appear on both sides. H plus ap appears only on the left, so that doesn't get removed. Cl minus appears on both sides, so that will get removed, so we put a cross through that. Na plus also appears on both sides, so that's a spectator ion and it goes away. And so what we're left with is H plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous gives H2O liquid. And what you can see is basically this is a summary of what is changing. So what ions are actually reacting to give us a reaction? Because the Na plus and the Cl plus, they're still there. They haven't gone anywhere. They're still in the NaCl aqueous. It just so happens that those ions don't really take part in any of the main reaction. So they are eliminated from the net ionic, which just shows the summary of what's changing. Okay, so that covers a, an example from a, for an acid base. Let's look at an example of a precipitation, just to give it a little different... Um, 
case. So if we have uh, silver, AgNO3, silver nitrate, aqueous, plus HCl, aqueous, this is going to give silver chloride solid plus HNO3. So silver nitrate from our solubility rules, we know this is soluble, so this is going to be silver plus aqueous, and this is going to be NO3 minus aqueous, and HCl is going to be soluble, so that's H plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. Now silver chloride is a insoluble salt, it gets the solid, so we know that that's not dissolving, that's a weak electrolyte, so that's going to go in as is, we don't, we don't break that up into its ions. And then we have H plus aqueous and NO3 minus aqueous, and that is because we know that um, the HNO3 is a strong electrolyte, is a strong acid. So let's remove our spectators and figure out what our net ionic is. So NO, uh, the silver plus doesn't appear on both sides because it goes into the AG. Cl, so that, that's one. The NO3 minus appears on both sides, the H plus appears on both sides, and the Cl minus winds up in the, in the salt. So for our net, in this case, we have Ag plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous gives Ag Cl solid as our net. Okay, so that is the difference between molecular, complete ionic, and net ionic. Um, the main things are soluble salts and strong acids and bases are written in their dissolved form in the complete ionic. Insoluble salts and weak electrolytes are not written in their ionized form. They're written in their non-ionized form because they don't break up. And just to, to remind you, the definition of a spectator ion is any ion that appears on both sides of the complete ionic equation. That is a spectator ion. Okay, so that is uh, the difference between molecular complete and net ionic equations.